we can get started. And so I'd like to um, let's see. I'd like to get started by welcoming everybody to today's talk on Vashon Schools through the windows of history and presented by Mike Kirk. Um, welcome to the Vashon Heritage Museum History Talks. This talk is a partnership between the Vashon Heritage Museum and the Senior Center. And um, we'd also like to recognize and thank our sponsors uh, for culture. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker. Mike Kirk is an Islander with a long history of public service as both a retired Vashon school principal and a three-time interim Vashon fire district chief. He's also an avid collector of beachcombers. He has almost every issue between, printed between 1967 and today. Mike will talk about the history of the consolidation of our many small schools on the island into the United School District we have today. Mike? Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I'd like to you know, thank uh, the Bashan Heritage and uh, Bruce Hallman, Mike Studdeth, Gene Finley, Lori Tucker, Reed Fitzpatrick, uh, Barbara Steen, and the late Mary Jo Barentine, uh, as well as you, Ellen, Brian Breno, Dr. Irish, for the help uh, in getting us all um, together. Uh, the theme for uh, Windows Through uh, History was uh, formulated uh, in 2016 when I did the exhibit there at uh, the Heritage Society. And the thing is, why did I say windows? I was impressed uh, with this 1920-era photo of girls peering into the window, the old Mari Center School up on uh, 59th to 40th, still a private home. And having been a teacher and a principal, I know that it's so typical for students to want to look into the windows of classrooms to see fellow teachers, just part of the inquisitiveness of students. And I note that even now when I substitute, for example, at the high school and students passing in the hallways with those big windows, there's lots of little waves. Um, we all sat in classrooms as kids and remember looking out the windows, passing uh, classmates, maybe at recess, certainly during weather, uh, snow, were we gonna get out early? We'd sit there and think about that. And of course, on that last day of school as we anxiously waited to get out, looking out the window. Now, while our own classroom windows you know, were a type of temporary bearer, barrier from the reality of the outside, historical windows in the form of books, photos, newspapers, research documents, um, allow us to view in our imaginations the reality of the former times. But the photo uh, has some difficulty because the photographer chopped some of the heads off. So in 2019, I asked Vashon High School senior uh, Sequoia Grigorich to bring that photo to life and as you see here her artistic talents have. Today we'll see some maps, photos, um, photos of school buildings, a few news articles to relate the history of how our schools influenced consolidation of the island's early communities and then our school system itself as we know it. Uh, the island in the 1870s was really a community of uh, shoreside, self-reliant groups of people. There were steep banks, uh, difficult to get up land until it was cleared to form their farms. So they uh, communicated among themselves, but also with the mosquito fleet. You could catch a mosquito fleet boat like a, a metro today and travel around Tacoma, Olala, and there were 28 docks. So there was plenty of opportunity for that. Soon enough, the paths uh, became rough roads, and early Islanders uh, valued education, it was obviously a value as the 1870s uh, went on. Home schools were started, a few students in this house or that house, but by 1880, there were 100 households, and it was felt time for something more formal in the way of a school structure. And so, uh, Reed Fitzpatrick's book of 1981 here. Um, I'm not sure I can hold it up here. This is a great book uh, that he did of the history of mainly Vashon High School, but also of all the early schools. It's a great resource. 
And he noted that the first structures from log cabins, for example, the Center School, 1881, right there where Lawrence Center's uh, lumber yard is, the Quartermaster School, which was probably either at 99th and Bashon Highway, that's top of Morgan Hill, or right uh, block south. That was the Quartermaster Log School. In Bashon, there was a building for students in 1882. There was a cabin at um, 176, that's Bank Road, west of the center of town to 107th. There was a cabin school there in 1884. And then there was the Frank Minor Home School, 1887, and that would be at the Highway Cove Road, that's one, uh, Southwest 168th. Uh, the teachers taught grades one to eight in one building, and uh, the population by 1885, the island had 347 people. Four years later, 514, and by 1892, there were 926 people um, on Bashan Island. The school district today has uh, much more than that. But there was no high school except that the Bashan College on the Burton Hill uh, opened in 1892. It had an academy, so there was a lower grades, like one to four, and then there was an upper uh, high school level, or a high school level. But the college didn't last long, nor did the academy. Uh, 1893 is an, a, prom a, a prominent year for uh, education, and um, the schoolhouse became an important uh, institution uh, as a meeting place, just as churches were. So meetings of all topics were often held and people walked great distances to the schoolhouse. Um, so let's look uh, here now. The school districts from 1880 to 1911. Uh, I'll note uh, first that 1893 is an important year. Uh, Bruce uh, Hallman in his book noted that at this time a number of social organizations had helped create an active and interdependent social structure that has character, uh, characterized the island ever since. And he notes that by this date, um, all of the patterns and themes of Bashan's future were clear with scattered shoreline communities, social organizations, and class structures. The boundaries of the school districts, as you see here, are difficult uh, because we don't at this point, this talk, have a record of just where uh, the particular boundaries were, which road, uh, which section or township area they were within. But you notice um, that uh, these were up to uh, 1911, the basic school districts. And uh, the lines began to change uh, between them as they uh, began to consolidate. Here's an example of the Frank Minor House from Reed Fitzpatrick's book. We move on to a map. This shows where various schools were except for Burton, Docton, and Bashan College, which we'll see in the next slide. Uh, so you see they covered a great part of the island. As we move on, this was the Bashan School, 1887 to 1892. It was a board and batten school. This was the one that was um, erected there where the uh, library is now at Over Park. It was modernized in 1909 to this structure. And this structure, at least half of it, continued to about 1967 after students moved out to uh, another school up uh, where the Harbor School is now, another grammar and high school that I'll get to. Um, half of this building still remained up until the middle 60s as a community hall. 1893, I noted, was an important year, both in Bruce's mind and also with uh, island historian Van Olinda. He said that it's his belief that more was accomplished on the island during 1893 or by then than has been done in any 10 consecutive years before or since, it was the high spot in the march of progress on the island. And he noted that in 1930. Uh, as we move on, I noted that there was a high school at uh, the Vashon College. That didn't last long. So in 1904, the residents of Burton decided to open their own college, uh, high school, excuse me. And they did, 
And that high school existed till about 1913. It was accredited in 1909, had about 14 students. And it was located on the peninsula at the corner of uh, Burton Drive and 97th Avenue Southwest. And it is still there. But the building was divided into two homes. So it's two private homes that exist there now. Uh, the Burton uh, community wanted a better high school. So in 1913, they built one just south of the Judd Creek Bridge, a two-story brick building. At the same time, the um, residents of Vashon, they wanted a high school. So in 1912, they built a uh, three-story building where the Harbor School is now, uh, about 164th and the highway. The um, residents of Vashon uh, within the districts began talking about consolidating as early as 1903, 1909. We know that Liza Beulah uh, rejected a consolidation with um, what was known as the Southern Heights District, which was most of the south part of Vashon down to Chautauqua. And the idea was to join together to form a high school at the old college, which was slowly going out of business, but that, that failed. But the important thing is that there was talk of uh, consolidation. Uh, Vanna Linda records a lot of this. <clears throat> the population by 1910 was 2,423. Uh, we have photos of many of the schools, some we don't. This was the Vashon High School in Grammar, uh, 1916. It had opened as mainly, <coughs> excuse me, high school in 1913, but these Vashon Grammar School there at Ober Park closed and they moved the students up here, the high school on the top floor and the lower grades on the first floor. Eventually, uh, five or six years later, a gym was built behind it and that gym existed until about five or six years ago. The um, enrollment by 1915 is 605 students on the island, and 100 of which were in the high schools, probably 50 at Vashon, 50 down at the Burton High School. Um, 29 teachers covered uh, all of the schools on the island at that time. We'll take a minute here to look at the Quartermaster School. This too remains as a private home at the corner of Southwest 216th and the Vashon Highway on the north uh, west, uh, west corner. It was considered uh, the best, uh, most beautiful school in the state when it was built. Um, and it was originally on the east side of the highway as we know the highway today. And at some point was moved across um, to where it now is as a private home. <laughs> in 1915, the Island News Record uh, had a story written by um, George St. John. He was the principal of the Burton Grammar School, one of the many Burton Grammar Schools that I'll show you. And he thought that the innovations in education uh, were such that if there was more consolidation and transportation, uh, we would better be able to uh, serve our students. He felt that one teacher teaching grades one to eight was not very productive. But if teachers took, for example, grades five to eight, 40 students, or grades one to four, 40 students, they could do a much better job. I don't think he could sell that idea today. Um, it was noted uh, in the same time that the PTAs, Liza Beulah, for example, uh, were talking about joining with um, the Burton School District. As time goes on, we see um, by 1920, things are really moving along as far as the uh, fervor for consolidation. Articles within um, the Island News uh, paper noted, for example, that um, state, county, and local school workers all over the state are more and more convinced that with better roads and quicker transportation, the best results are obtained by bringing small schools together with a few grades to a teacher as possible. 
perfection being attained when it's uh, possible to have one grade to a teacher. Mind you, one grade to a teacher. Still probably 30 kids. Therefore, it appears that if um, it's the best education we desire to give our children, we would make a serious um, uh, mistake in trying to do anything but work towards a smaller scale. Um, he continued, the idea uh, is a good one, and that sooner or later uh, it will be brought about. It's up to the people of the island, these two islands, to bring about this sooner, that is, a consolidation of the small schools and to get started and unite uh, this for the welfare of our students. Um, so the, the newspapers uh, at that time, and th thanks to Mike Sutta for preserving these, have a great amount of information about schools. Um, in uh, that same year, June of 1920, the idea was for one school. That was written by a Mr. Hansen. Vashon Mari is cut off by salt water. We should be one great united and contented and happy family uh, in religious matters, in school matters, in social matters. Uh, a movement is on to unite uh, us. Why not start a movement to unite the schools? Um, the uh, um, when the uh, high school, excuse me, moved out of uh, their sites uh, later, about 1930, there was a great move to bring all the elementary kids either into the old Burton High School down at Judd Creek, or the Vashon High School up at uh, the site of the Harbor School today, and eventually that would happen. Uh, by locating the school, uh, eventually the idea of a high school, a union high school, this idea started to grow, uh, to close the two existing high schools, Burton and Vashon, and to move something towards the center of the island. That, as early as June 1920, was an idea. And um, center, center being the center of the island, it was noted, the geographical middle, would be a point to approve of the logical site for a Union High School. There was a paved highway, would give free access to the North End, because the North End did have a better road than the road to Burton. That was a contentious issue. Um, soon a movement, uh, there would be a movement to uh, opposition, but uh, it would be bewildering to us that if we did not begin moving on this, we would not be working in the best interest of our students. Ben Linda noted uh, in that year, 1920, residents want schools within reach of their children. Some schools, as we'll see, did join in on the consolidation movement. Two school districts, though, Liza Bula and Columbia, uh, resisted for a long time. Columbia School, for example, and Barbara Steen can relate this history as a former student, had a very devoted community, and it continued till the very end, even after we became one school district in 1941. The boom and bust years, as Bruce noted, 1920s moving into depression were very difficult for schools, but it didn't um, stop the fervor for consolidation. Uh, Bruce noted that by 1920, the island uh, had emerged, as we know it, the area of, an era of consolidation the first school consolidations were already beginning to take place. Times were difficult, but uh, Islanders continued on. Now the two high schools uh, with their 50 to 80 students each eventually uh, were very academically uh, oriented. Uh, the debate clubs were uh, winning debates. There were uh, teams playing off island and playing each other. Uh, there were plays, uh, the front page of the uh, papers then always had the story of the latest play that the juniors or seniors were putting on at the respective buildings. And they were uh, great turnouts of people would come to those plays. Um, but like I, all high schools then, there were those other activities such as initiation. 
And here's the story, Initiation, May 10th, 1923, by Gertrude Janney. Last Friday night, the high school upperclassmen gathered in the gym uh, to see the poor, seared freshies get invaded by the softs. Uh, beginning at eight o'clock, they were uh, led into the presence of the visitors one by one. That's into that old gym that existed up until a few years ago. They had to walk a narrow plank onto a table, blindfolded, and then jump off. Um, roll a peeled onion across the floor with their noses, submit to a beating, and uh, then dress in strange costumes. Uh, that was for boys and girls. Like schools then, there were dress codes. Um, 1923, the clothing committee at Bashan High School made the following recommendation on taboos uh, and recommendations for girls' clothing. We, the Committee on Clothing, hereby submit the following list of taboo clothing and recommend clothing for the girls of VHS. It's a little difficult to tell what, in some cases, they were recommending. But they noted silk hosiery, silk dresses, chiffon, georgette, china silk, and other transparent materials uh, for blouses and dresses, long dangling earrings, French heeled shoes, unclean clothing, rolled stockings, garters, um, worn below the knees, low camisoles, and excessive use of cosmetics uh, were those issues that were raised at that time. Um, 1920, the Burton, uh, the Center School, let's see, Bruce, I want, oh, the Center School, um, I'm gonna tell you about it uh, making some changes, but let's take a look at the Vermont School. This would have been on Southwest 150, Sixth. If you go off the highway by the Episcopal Church, eastbound down to Glen Acres, that's 156th. And on the Vermontville Road or thereabouts was this um, elementary school. And it existed till about 1912. And then it joined students from the old Bashon School that had been at Overt Park at the new Bashon High School. So both schools were consolidated there at that time. The Columbia School. The early Columbia School, it, uh, whether it is this exact structure, maybe not, is still a private home there on the Columbia Loop. Here's the Columbia School, uh, school later. Some of the school bells, uh, I think four or five, read Fitzpatrick notes, are still uh, in existence. They were saved. This was Columbia School in the 1930s. The Chautauqua School. Uh, some people say that this first school was on Southwest 216th off um, Monument Road. Other accounts say it was a mile or a mile and a half west of Center on uh, Cemetery Road. But there you can see it had a school bell. Let's see if we have a, okay, we'll get to Southern Heights here. Now this was just north of the Talico Y at a spot southwest 260th Street. It's the only picture we have of uh, this particular Southern Heights building. Later, these students would go on to join students at Burton School. Well, Center School, the first one, 1881, a log school, was raised and a new building was constructed. But then by 1920, it was decided uh, they want a new building. So they built one at the corner of Southwest 204th and the Vashon Highway on the southeast corner. There's a building there now that is the school district maintenance building. That was the third center school because uh, the ornate school that I'll show you shortly was raised in 1920. 100 um, of the um, parents of kids got together one Saturday and in one day raised that school and then had a huge lunch. And then they raised money, $2,650 to build uh, the next center school, again, uh, of which is still basically there. Um, transportation, as we noted, was something that uh, was desired uh, to get kids to these consolidated schools. High school students in Docton, given that there was no road really until the 20s, they came on boats over to the Burton High School. One of them was the Charlotte B. Those students would board at Docton and then um, 
embark at about Southwest 230th and the highway. There was a dock and then they had a short walk up to um, the Burton High School. Uh, various types of um, trucks and wagons were used uh, to bring students to school and um, the boat was used until the road to um, Burton along the water was finally opened. Um, I had noted that uh, there were two high schools and that um, the dividing line was Southwest um, 196, which was the cemetery road. And that became known as the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, there were contentious feelings between Burton and uh, Vashon. Vashon became the commercial center that uh, Burton had hoped to be. Uh, the really good road was uh, developed from Cemetery Road to the North End, and it was a pretty rough road down to Burton. So 196, if you lived north of it, you went to Vashon High School. If you lived south of it, you went to uh, Burton High School. And so uh, we had, again, two high schools. The uh, high school kids, again, just some stories here. Uh, in 1924, some of the high school students up at Vashon raised $450 for a garage for their cars. Burton High School, 1924, started at 8.45 in the morning, and then the students were out at 2.45 with a half hour lunch. 1925, Vashon High School got hot and cold showers. I think those were in the old gym, and I think too it was just one shower. You had to wait in line. Um, 1925, the Mari Center bus put in new celluloid curtains because the girls couldn't tear them. At that same time, showing how well-educated our kids were, Yossi, uh, Yosimura, she left for Kyoto University in Japan, 1925, to live with the sister of the Empress, and she was going to teach English to the royal children. Little known fact. Um, we've had a number of very successful students. One of the very prominent ones was Barbara Durham, 1960 graduate. Her mom was a second grade teacher. She became Washington State's first Supreme Court female justice in Washington State. Um, the football field at Vashon had a large rock, too many injuries. The only way to remove it was to dynamite it. And they did that in October of 1926. Um, 1926, <coughs> the PTA was dispensing milk and graham crackers to students K-3 to to help them achieve a healthy weight. Um, grammar students there at Burton, uh, again, watching weight and health of small students, were taken to Coy Meredith store there in Burton to have them weighed on the big scale. Um, students, like all students, um, high school students, 1927, uh, the sheriff and the uh, justice of the peace decided it was time for a curfew. Uh, and that was based on the fact that there was too much auto riding and petting parties. There would be a $4 fine if uh, you broke that curfew. 1927, two stolen typewriters from Vashon High School were found in Seattle pawn shops and returned. A typewriter in those days would be like early computers 20 years ago. And finally in 29, as the Judd Creek Bridge was being built, uh, there was a concern that students were crossing the Judd Creek from the north on logs to get to um, the high school. Now the rivalry between the two schools um, was fierce. And it got to a point that during the 1927 football game between Vashon and uh, Burton High Schools, and these were games in the afternoon because there was no stadium at night. And the Burton students, they said, would always line up on the side closest to the a building. And uh, the Vashon students were on the street. They would get sometimes 400 residents at these games. <laughs> there was a particular game, uh, 1927, at halftime. The Vashon fans had a, ban a banner, a big paper banner, 20 feet long. It had a Holstein cow on it with a huge udder. And they had written, this is no bull, we'll win this game. Well, when they started parading that around the field, the Burton 
uh, fans rushed and destroyed it, tearing it to pieces. Um, they tried to get the game back um, together, <laughs> had to extend the halftime. Burton fans unloaded their best Sunday punches um, before they could get the game going again. So this became um, an issue. Roland Carey, the historian, writes, it was the desire for Union High School that brought the consolidation effort together. In retrospect, the consolidation of a high school in 28 led to the disintegration of the communities more than anything else. So by uh, 1928, uh, February 1928, uh, there was a vote 581 to 196 for a Union High School. Um, at that time, too, the uh, grammar schools were at center. Burton, Maury, Southern Heights, Cove, Vashon, and Liza Beulah. State support in those days for school was 30 cents a day, and attendance had to be carefully watched because that's where the money came from. We still have the attendance records, many of them, hundreds of them, back to um, about 1895 that uh, the district has preserved. Um, a high school, then at uh, center was coming into the four, a lot of discussion about it. It was decided to buy the Dixon and Sterling properties. The Dixon spread for $1,500, 10 acres, and the Sterling property for $1,450, another 10 acres. And uh, this would be on the west side of the highway, they said next to the Christian Science Church. Uh, the property was purchased. Voters voted 294 to 36 for that. Um, it opened in 1928, not the new building. That was 1930. But what they did in 1928 was put all the juniors and seniors up at the old Vashon High School and the freshmen and sophomores down at the Burton High School. So uh, Vashon High School then, September 28, 36 juniors, 45 seniors. Freshmen at Burton, 52. Sophomores numbered uh, 59. So 192 high school students in 1928. Uh, their parent uh, PTA was uh, formed. And uh, by that point, uh, six school buses were traveling 166 miles a day around the island transporting kids to school. Health is a concern. There was the smallpox pox outbreak. There were other uh, measles, etc. We know that in November of 1928, the center school was fumigated for smallpox. Um, the first graduating class, and again, this was at the old building. New building wasn't ready till 1930. That first graduating class um, was held at the Presbyterian Church. And the um, Island News uh, reported that there were five to 600 people at the ceremony and 100 had to be turned away. Not sure who was counting people. Five to 600 in the church. Um, the high school, the building was moving along. There was a lot of enthusiasm. Some people didn't like the idea, but it was moving along. But um, they continued to have raise money and especially because some of the school districts were in debt. Um, Liza Beulah, Mari Center School were in debt. So the businessmen, the commercial club, and there were a number of other clubs very much in favor of the school, they began raising money to pay those debts. Liza Beulah needed $600 to pay off its debt. And so with carnivals and whatnot, the uh, businessmen, the commercial club, they raised money. They even raised money to buy one of the first fire trucks. Um, and it was noted that, uh, with some resistance still, uh, the editor of the paper said, with the unusual intelligence, the people on the island, with that, it would be criminal if we fail our young people through the calamity of howling of a certain class of people who are not well informed on the subject to even talk about uh, a Union High School. Um, Bonds were passed. Uh, it was determined that the new high school, uh, 
would cost $43,000. That uh, levy bond issue passed 385 to 70. But it was the depression. The island had 2,798 people. Um, that uh, it was a difficult time that uh, the uh, federal county state work programs were employing people on the island and they did a lot of, of work on the school. I think they built the Columbia gym, they put roofs on, they built, um, began the sidewalk that extended from what is now over park all the way up to uh, the Vashon Grammar School. Um, it uh, had its problems as when any new building is built, there's always some concern about cost. And so in 1930, uh, there was a concern about cost and the particular board. And the editor of the paper wrote, the present situation, the high school construction, cannot be um, uh, ignored. The bitterness and hard feelings being engendered will prove ruinous to our island and injure the purpose for which we have united um, if it's allowed to go on. If the charge that inferior material and workmanship is going uh, into the very foundation of our high school, then drastic action should be taken at once to remedy the con uh, condition. The present state of affairs by the attitude of the high school board is less the public knows the better. This is the accusation the paper made against the board. They contend anyone is welcome at their meetings. We, the Islanders record, have been told by action and word that we were personally persona non grata at certain board meetings when the new high school was under uh, discussion because we might let the public know more than they should. So it was also a problem of whether the high school district should pay for its own buses or to, uh, to lease them, or that's to buy their own. The editor goes on, we know too much bitterness and dissension in the past to believe that we can escape its effects. The building was under construction. The cornerstone was laid in 1930. And at the cornerstone laying, there was a concern that the architect, Silas Nelson, um, was not really in favor of what the uh, beachcomber had said. Consequently, when they laid the cornerstone, and uh, put a box of treasures in it. Silas would not allow the Island News Record newspaper to be placed in the box. Uh, the school did open, had its first graduation. Uh, there again in the new gym at the high school, uh, a room 52 by 92. It was stated in 1931, that first class with people like Joe Green Sr., that um, 700 people were in the high school new gym. That gym, again, was 52 by 92. That would have been seven people per square foot. So I think they overestimated the number. Um, the high school was there. Um, the talk then becomes consolidation of the other schools. Uh, the depression goes on. But by 19... Um, 41, the um, island uh, comes together and realizing that uh, they need one school. And so just before Pearl Harbor, uh, December 1941, the island voted unanimously uh, for one school district. Now after that, individual schools, Burton Elementary, Vashon Elementary, Columbia, uh, continued into the 40s and um, by the time we reach uh, the end of the war and the baby boom and the school population is growing, we're into the 1950s, um, there's talk of new schools. We'll take a look at a few more schools here. This is the Liza Beulah School. Uh, it was uh, basically at Southwest uh, 220th and the Wax Orchard Road. This was um, one, the first one. Uh, this is the building that exists there now. It became the Frank Ernst Home. Uh, 1925, the building we just saw burned down. Uh, Laurel Tingley, the teacher who I brought, bought our home from, she was making hot chocolate for a parent meeting there one day in 1925 and the stove went afire and that was the end of the second Liza Beulah School. Now this is the center school. This was that ornate school that was at 204 on the highway that they tore down <laughs> in one day 
1920 to build the next, here it is, the center school. This structure still exists on that corner. There was a second structure, which uh, Keith Putnam said the school behind here um, was the play shed and this was the classroom. Um, eventually, the classroom was moved to the east end of the high school in the 1930s and was there until five or six years ago as the music building. But that was the, the center school. This was the Mari School, which is now a private home. Um, by uh, this map then uh, shows where the uh, Burton schools were. Um, I'm not sure if this shows when I'm pointing to it. No, uh, that was where the Burton High School and Grammar School were. The first Burton High School was out on the peninsula. There was uh, a grammar school at about 236 in Bashan Highway. There was a, another, uh, a second Burton Grammar School at Southwest 105th and Southwest 238th on the Burton Hill. Uh, in Docton, the building is still there. It's the uh, water company building. And it was the first Docton school. You'll see it. There was a second Docton school that um, was made out of the old uh, Docton Hotel, which is now gone. But this is uh, Burton School number one at 236 in the highway. And in the background, you can see the large home that was the um, home where children stayed, uh, children, the parents related to the Vashon College when they went as missionaries to China. And in the background too, you also see the cupola of the old uh, Burton High School. There was a private home on this site, but it was built on this 1929 on the site of this old school. This was uh, Burton Grade Grammar School number two, up on 105th and Southwest 238th on the Burton Hill. That was on a five acre tract and it was raised in about 1937. This was Union High School, Burton. Um, it was the school opened in 1913. Um, it became the grammar school number uh, three for the Burton residents. Uh, this was the Burton High School, 1904. Again, this is now divided into two homes. The cupola is gone. This is another view of Burton High School in um, probably the late 1920s, excuse me, no, it'd have to be the late 1930s. Uh, Southwest 228th is the dirt road on the right. And by the picket, by the fence would be uh, the highway. And there was a concern that people would take shortcuts across the playing field there, um, sometimes driving down the highway. This was the Docton School, which is now uh, the water district uh, building there as you drive into Docton. And this was the old hotel uh, that became uh, the Burton Grammar School, um, probably in the late, sometime in the 1930s. Uh, Mil Krancevich told me that uh, when they had the big Christmas program upstairs every December, there would be so many Doctonites and kids upstairs, they had to put a four by four um, to hold up the ceiling <laughs> from the first floor so the thing wouldn't cave in. Um, I was noting that uh, population was growing at the end of the 40s, the baby boom. 1948, the district had 997 students. Uh, by 1951, 899 students. So a move was made to build um, uh, new elementary schools at Burton and one up at Vashon. We noted the Vashon College. This was it. Um, some of these buildings are still existent. In the forefront, the gabled house is uh, Chief Bob Larson's house. It was his grandfather's home. Uh, the Burton Grammar School is on the center middle right of your photo. And the building just to the upper left of it, that is still there as a private home. The school burned in um, at various points, 1910, 1930, and uh, is of course no longer there. Here's another photo of it. When the final fire happened in October 1930, the one fire truck on island 
didn't make it to the fire, which caused the Burton residents to be quite irate. There it is, one Sunday morning, the truck never got there. Um, by 1920, we have a Vashon school, the Upper Right Star, the Columbia School, moving down to the middle. We have the Center School, Quartermaster School, Liza Beale School over on the far left, uh, Burton Elementary School, a high school, Burton L Grammar School at 236 in the highway. There on Mari Island is the Mari Center School and, and then the Docton School. So you see the schools are diminishing. Um, this was the election ballot in 1930 uh, to get the major money for the, um, the Union High School. And that was it. On the far right of that building, Today, if you go up to uh, the high school tennis courts, you'll notice that there's still a um, brick building. That part of it was added because of the growth of students in 1951. That was not part, as you see it today, of the original 1930 school. There were so many eighth graders in the two elementary schools, uh, Vashon and Burton, that they had to put eighth graders there. Um, I mentioned that by 1950-51, they needed new elementary schools. And so one was built at Burton, 1954, and one at Vashon, 1953. They were grades one to eight. And at that point, there were no other grade schools on the island. Even Columbia had closed. Um, the uh, picture shown here is Vashon Grammar School. That was uh, by then, 1930. A, um, a, high sc uh, a grammar school. The high school students had moved down to Union High, which is on the present high school campus. Um, this was the old Docton Hotel again, which is no longer there. And another picture of the Mari School, 1911. This is the one where the girls um, are looking through the window that I opened this program with. Again, the Burton School up on the hill, uh, the grammar school, I think I'm, uh, this was the entrance to the center school. This was the building that was moved to the east end of the high school and was raised about uh, five years ago. And it existed till about 1941-42. Then the Liza Beulah School, Columbia School. By 1953, there is Vashon Elementary at the very north end. Um, the uh, Vashon um, elementary at the south end. And let's see, what else do we have here? The um, two of these buildings, um, you know, had been vacated, or three of these had been vacated by that time. So by the 1950s, we're um, big push to get new schools. Uh, the, the people were very uh, much in favor of them. Uh, this was uh, Vashon Elementary. Uh, more students are coming in. This was Burton Elementary. These were block stone buildings that didn't last too long. Both have been raised. And um, this then, the move for an, an intermediate school, which was an idea of a grades uh, six, seven, eight, etc., even thought of in the 1960s. It came to fruition in 69. Vashon High School number two came into existence, 73, it was raised. Um, by the time we get to 94, we really have um, the kindergarten and uh, two high schools and McMurray. Chautauqua opened in 95 and uh, McMurray became a middle school in 94. The high school, high school number three, we seem to keep our buildings for 40 years and then build a new one. It opened and is there in 2014. The central campus uh, has been a long-standing idea, as we know uh, from the time of the desire for Union High. Uh, Carl Singer, Bill Kirshner, Harry Nordstrom, Bandy Banner, Joe Green Sr. These were the, uh, the real giants of school boards that uh, brought all of this consolidated district um, to fruition. And we appreciate their work. They meet sometimes till 1.30 in the morning discussing school matters. 
So from 1880 to 1994, here are your consolidated schools. So questions. Are we on unmute or? We are hearing. on. Um, oh, yes. I hope I didn't talk too fast there. No, you're, you're, you're great. We're um, five minutes to the hour. And so we do have time for questions. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please put them in the, the Q&A. The, the only question I have so far is, and I think you may have answered it, where who are those kids behind Mr. Kirk? Again, that um, I said maybe the 1940s, but there are Asian children in that picture. So I take it this is a pre-1939 uh, photo of kids at Burton, kids in the Depression, and that's why I noted I, those very serious uh, expressions. Oh. Well, I, I don't think we have any more questions. Thank you so much, Mike. This okay. has been great. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. <laughs> have a good day. Good weekend. Bye.